I tried painting a miniature, making it look good using only two colors. Hey everyone, welcome to Squidmore Miniatures, I'm Emil. Today we're gonna do something fun and challenging. All over the internet we see I painted this with three colors, I painted this with four colors. Normally when I paint miniatures I probably use 30 to 40, 50 different paint pots and if you've seen my shelf behind me I'm a paint addict and I love trying different paints and today we're doing a miniature with two colors. It's a uh, lively green and corn red and we're going to try to paint Elonth the elf bust from the Kickstarter. And yeah, for those of you who didn't know already, these uh, miniature paint brushes, the Squidmar Mark 1, as well as the miniature bust that I'm using in the video to paint, is actually my first ever products. And last week I finally launched the Kickstarter with these brushes and the busts that I've been working on for about 10 months to make my dream miniature paint brushes that's awesome for any artists out there painting small details and want high quality tools, as well as five miniature busts to give you some creative time painting miniatures and maybe to help you improve a little bit with your painting. So if you're interested in checking out that stuff, I put the link in the video description where you can check out the Kickstarter and maybe pledge to get some of the stuff. Psst, stick around to the end. Because uh, in the video I'll be giving away one set of these brushes and you will get them before anyone else in the world. I don't have much more to say. I'm gonna set up the camera so you can see me paint this and uh, yeah, let's try mixing some paints and, and see how it goes. Also, I, I have uh, white and, and black because technically they're not colors. Okay, <laughs> so we got the camera set up. We got the, the light here. <laughs> it's recording. And uh, with that, let's uh, try to do some color mixing. And as I said, we have the two main colors, corn red and lively green. And let's see how these two work together, what type of mixes we can do. And uh, we're gonna need a lot of color. Because these are the only colors we're gonna use. And of course, as I mentioned, we have black and white as well. Let's see, okay. So it doesn't look a lot like a uh, natural skin tone, or like Caucasian skin tone from the get-go, but uh, once we get in, maybe I would say two parts green and one part red, we start getting sort of a good mid-tone. Uh, this could be like a base, base color for the skin, I think, yeah, this could be really nice. It's a bit uh, thin, I wonder if it's the green color that's a bit thin, but I think that could definitely work. Let's, let's add that using the airbrush, and I think when we go brighter in tones, when we add whites, uh, I think we want to have a little bit more of the reds, maybe? So it gets a bit more sort of pinkish in the tones. Maybe somewhere around there. That would be a good... I think for the shadows, it's a bit harder if we want to add shadows because like adding black, it's just gonna desaturate everything. But I think for for the shadows, it's gonna be a bit tougher. Like glazing in the this sort of uh, red tone will probably work just fine to get sort of the rosé skin tones that you have if you're Caucasian. Uh, leather, how can we do leather? Sounds like black and red and just a little bit of the green. Uh -oh. So something like this, maybe for the leathery parts. Something like this. It's gonna be, it's not gonna be the most pretty leather color, but I think using some stippling and making textures, it's gonna be fine. Okay, but that's, that's kind of cool. It's kind of a cool brown tone. And for the octopus, I think I'm gonna go with some more like greenish tones. So we take some blacks and we mix in some greens more greens uh, more greens 
So something like this as the sort of base tone, and then we just add more and more greens. And maybe some whites in there. So I think we have a plan. Uh, let me switch out the paper. I'll bring out the airbrush and we'll do the base coat first. And then we can just take it, take it, take it, take it from there. So base coat is done, uh, at least uh, with the skin tones. And I guess from here it's just highlighting. Uh, I think I'm gonna add uh, like a first highlight using the airbrush as well to save me some time. Uh, adding a drop of water. Need to, to mix in the pot, I think, to otherwise it will be too hard. I think this ended up being quite a nice color. As a painter, I truly am a creature of habit. I have my ways of painting and tend to go to these techniques and colors most every time that I paint. But there is a problem with that. If I repeat the same thing over and over, maybe I'll get better at using that specific paint or a specific technique used in a certain way. But it won't push me to learn new things or learn new techniques and finding new ways of working with colors. This is a simple experiment or exercise, if you will, that pushed me to work more with the saturated colors and blending and mixing in ways that I've never done before. But most importantly, I feel like it opened up new creative doors for me. It taught me new things that I can use for my next painting project or maybe just something that inspired me to paint an old model that I haven't done before, but do it uh, with some of these colors and mixings that I've done today. Finding some things that I really liked, like working with the green, for example, on the squid, uh, and some things that I didn't like as much. Uh, one of the things that maybe got me least happy was how matte and desaturated the leather felt, and in some ways the skin as well, but that was fixable in the end. Maybe I could have changed up the leather a bit by adding more greens or reds, but really for this experiment I found something that I didn't enjoy, and, and that's okay. So I'm about three and a half hours in and I feel like I've come quite a bit in the painting process already. The Vallejo Lively Green wasn't a very pigment dense paint, so for all of the parts that was heavy reliant on the green paint I had to do many many layers and one of those was the skin. I think in the end I probably painted about 10-15 different layers on each area of the miniature of the skin tones and to me that's a little bit too much for painting something like this and if I could change something in terms of the colors I would try to find a little bit more pigment dense green than this specific one. So <laughs> I've spent about five hours on it. It's actually a new day now. I'm just wearing the same shirt, so it looks like it's the same day. It's uh, moving magic for you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's time to, to finish some more details. I've got some leather left to do, the eyes, uh, like the, the necklace, and some on the knife uh, of the miniature. And I think after that, I'm gonna call this done. Or the hair, I need to do the hair as well. And when that is done, I think we're done for the day uh, because I've got more videos to record. But <laughs> I'm having really fun with this challenge. It's really, it's really hard though, especially with the skin tones because if I pre-mix a color and then the color dries out or I paint up all of it and I mix new and it's too green, then I need to repaint the part. And yeah, it's difficult, but it's definitely doable. And it's definitely a challenge that's uh, helping me to develop and try out new things. So for that, it's definitely worth it. So 
sometimes I really surprised myself with how much I was able to vary the two colors and how wide of a span I was able to get in the tones. Mixing greens and black to create the metals and reds and greens to create a dynamic skin tone, it really forced me to work a lot with light values. Making sure that the leather was darker than the skin tones and that the metallics were somewhere in between it to give me a nice span and great separation between the different parts of the miniatures. I feel like one can really learn a lot from pushing mixing colors this way and I really encourage all of you out there to try it out sometime. And after the miniature was almost done, I added just a few extra details, making sure that all of the parts were painted, well separated and neatly done. Then I glazed in some red tones in the shadows of the skin, just to make it look a bit more blush, pushing in some blood flow into the skin areas that otherwise ended up looking quite pale. So, the miniature is done, uh, <laughs> at least for now. I think I've spent about eight hours in total yesterday and today painting this one. I could probably spend another 20 hours perfecting it and painting details and doing things like that. Painting the back, because <laughs> I haven't done that yet. But I think as for a challenge to challenge myself to paint things that I'm not used to doing, practicing mixing paints, I feel like I've accomplished more than I set out to do. This was incredibly fun and I feel like it, it really helped me to broaden my views of how to paint and maybe next Next time I won't have to use the whole set of 150 colors. <laughs> so did I enjoy this more than using more color pots? Uh, no is the answer, because uh, I can be a little bit more precise uh, when having more paints, but do I need 150 of them? No, probably not. Anyways, if you guys want to have a set of these brushes, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I want to give away one of these sets with the four awesome Squidmore brushes. And I ask just three things. Uh, leave a like in the video. Uh, and if you're already subscribed, the only thing you have to do then is to let me know what the first thing you would paint would be if you got a set of these brushes. So guys, with that said, uh, have a great day. Don't forget to check out the Kickstarter and massive shout out to all of my patrons supporting me, making sure that I can run this channel. An extra shout out to my top patrons, Alice, Brandon, Guy, Daniel, Alex, Christopher, Joshua, Mark LA, Jonas, Mark Andre, Richard. Seriously, friends, you guys are beasts. And with that said, have a great day.